I've even thought about wearing the postpartum diapers just so that I won't have to fold my pads and stick it between my ass cheeks just so it will stay in place. Let's just move on. Hi you guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Colors and I'm back with another video and today's video is gonna be like what my 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 child. At this point I don't even know but I did write down a lot of things this time. There's been a whole lot of whole lot of I know last time if you watched my 17 and 18 week Bump date, there wasn't much going on, but no baby. It was like after I cut the camera off, there's just been a lot going on. So uh, I wrote down a list. I can't even tell you how many on the list, but let's just go ahead and get to some of these things. So now, like I said, I don't know at this point <laughs> of when things happen. Like, let's just get that out of our minds. I'ma say it's between the 19th week and the 21st week. But yeah, like I said, no particular order. The first thing, and this is probably the most annoying thing. Y'all let me know if y'all pregnant or have been pregnant and experienced this, but I feel like, um, I've been having like, okay, I'm gonna say it the next way first and then I'm gonna tell you what I mean. So I feel like I've been having a real bad case of runny nose aka a lot of boogers and I feel like I get boogers all the time y'all know it takes time to get boogers but for some reason I swear every time like every hour I'm blowing my nose and there's like boogers stuck up there and I gotta get them out all the time is that a thing like that sounds even weird to say like even if it does happen to people who are pregnant I don't even think they would take notice to it like I feel like I'm constantly cleaning my nose and that's a problem because it ain't cute i could be talking to someone y'all know that feeling when it feel like you have a boogie in your nose now you don't want to have a conversation with people so it's like how can i combat this because you know when you have boogies in your nose people don't tell you that you got a boogie in your nose but you feel the boogie in your nose so then I just, <sighs> but on the other side of running things no that sounds bad let me not segue into it like that so how do i say this I wrote down that I have a leaky vagina, but listen, let me let me let me backtrack for a second. Okay, okay, my my vagina's not broken. I feel like, and I don't know if it's sweat. I don't know if there's just extra discharges going on, but I feel like my panties are always soaked. I was wondering for a while if I was peeing on myself, but there was no color and no odor. So I started wearing pads, but I hate pads. Like I really hate pads, but I'm, I'm not into the thought of putting a tampon. That probably is not good to do while you're pregnant. I don't really know, but then you can stick a penis up there while pregnant. So, huh. I just feel like, you know, like it's a whole lot and I don't know what it is. I've even thought about wearing the postpartum diapers just so that I won't have to fold my pads and stick it between my ass cheeks just so it will stay in place. TMI, but I have a running vagina, I guess. Let's just move on. The next thing that has gone on is that I did have my 20 week ultrasound. Like I said, this ain't in no particular order, but I wrote down I got the 20, 20 week ultrasound, which in hindsight is the 20 week anatomy scan where they show everything that's going on, which reminds me, let me get my ultrasound picture. So since they had to check so much, I got plenty of pics so let me show you some of the most important ones oh i got a good 4d picture so let me show you this you see baby's face look at it so it's like the out structure but you can tell it's a nose you can tell it's it's the hands right here and i don't really know what that is but this bottom but yeah, that is my baby girl. And look at this one. This is a really good one. Oh, that is what baby girl's looking like at the 20 week anatomy scan. So there was some complications. So if you followed me on my whole pregnancy journey in the past, you would know I had a history of having a weak, incompetent, but not incompetent, but weak cervix 
Well, we started to see signs of a weak cervix. So when I had the anatomy scan, we did see that at points of time that my cervix would open, but mostly on the back end of where baby's head is. So my whole cervix wasn't opening, but half of it would. So I had a long length, which was four, I believe around 4.9, which is in a normal range, but uh, that part would open and close. And also the part where it's near the baby's head it's starting to funnel. I guess it's comforting in a sense to know that it's still long, but I wouldn't be surprised if it starts to shorten because, or become weak. Now, when they pressed down on my stomach, it didn't open and close. It did one time, but majority of the time it didn't. So they're gonna continue to keep tabs on me. The case comes up where it starts to shorten, and then that's where the progesterone will kick into place, and then we'll go from there. So I did have an appointment today, which I'll talk about next week. But just to give you a slight insight on that, I'm just not feeling 100% comfortable with the point of action if it got shorter. So we'll talk about more of that in that conversation next week. But um, when it came to the anatomy scan, baby looked good. Baby was moving a lot. It is what it is. I'll have a problem or get upset when it's time to get upset. Um, until then, I'm just gonna continue to keep high energy, be optimistic until I have a reason to be upset. I also did get my bottle for glucose, which will happen, I think, next week on the 20th of November. That's when I'll be taking my glucose test, so I do plan on doing a video on that because, oddly, uh, as you can tell, that I do not do doctor's videos because they know I do YouTube now, child, and they just not about the life, so I can't really they're watching me basically so but i will be trying to get a good um glucose video out there and kind of comparing the two it was pretty smooth the first time but we'll see what happens the second time the next thing that's happened is that i am growing boobs uh, my boobs are growing again my nipples are growing again and now i have no bras that fit and i'm back to my nursing bras so um, the bras that I was wearing towards the end with Nala is my regular everyday bras because it's a problem when my nipples are playing peekaboo out my bra. So that lets me know that I'm getting boobages again, which in turn, um, I'm definitely going to have to ask how it works at the hospital when it's time to have this baby when I don't want to breastfeed and how do I get rid of the milk because I'm not trying to have leaky nipples. So. Uh, one of the things that I have thought about during these weeks is that how I am, I don't want to bring it down to any sad or scary moments, but in reality, I am in that scary stage. So I remember when I was about to have Nala around this whole 21 week mark, I was steadily getting pressure and being told how we need to make sure that you're making it to at least 24 weeks because anything less than 24 weeks we will not save your child so now and probably futuristically um i'm in that kind of tense stage because i'm like i'm so close god forbid anything happens i'm like extremely careful um, well, I won't say extremely, but I am pretty careful on my actions and the things I do because now I know I am like two weeks at this point of filming shy of that 24 week mark. And now uh, I'm definitely feeling baby move a lot. And it's like, this is a baby. Like it's been a baby, but it's like, I feel you, especially with me having a posterior placenta. So I feel her a lot earlier and a lot more than I did with Nala. So a lot of times people sadly have miscarriages around the 20 something mark. So I can't imagine how devastating that is and I get a little anxious around this point. Yeah, that's just something that's been on my mind and I just thought I should just tell y'all because 
Um, that is something that you may not think about even if you never had kids before, but that's something they're pretty adamant about. Like, hey, you know, it's gonna be stillborn if you don't make it to 24 months, so be careful. So now I'm in like the home stretch. But let's move off of that. Next thing, and I'm gonna just say two parts in one because they kind of go hand in hand. And that is that I am having butt spasms and I had this with Nala, but it's like, it's like my whole butt crap area hurt. And I hear this is actually a thing. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I got butt spasms and also it hurts when I sit down and I always hurt myself sitting down and I swear every single day I hurt myself because I forget that it hurts when I sit down. So I just plop down and then my whole butt to a whole area just like hurts. Like it kind of hurts right now just even sitting down but that's because it's bad hard in here. But it's a guest bedroom so it don't matter. Oh one thing that's good is that I will be having Mama Doula back for a pregnancy. So I had a doula having Nala or whatnot, and that same doula will be delivering this baby who has no name as of yet. But I did sign up over this time frame for her to come back. So I will be seeing her around 34 weeks of pregnancy since I had the other baby so close that I'm just a veteran at this point and she will see me towards the finish line. The next thing which is really annoying is that my sleep is starting to uh, screw with me. So I did talk about having insomnia but now I'm starting to fall asleep a lot earlier. It's, it's actually pretty late for me right now. I'm usually like dead sleep by this point. David is putting baby girl to sleep um, but it is eight o'clock oh i'm tired too after i put um baby girl to sleep and that's like every night now i go to bed like eight o'clock and then i wake up maybe about three or four and then i go back to sleep for like an hour then i'm up by five and now i have this new thing where i have to have coffee because i sleep so long but then i i wake up i am up so long before work then I go back to sleep and then it just make me sleepy again. So it's just like I'm getting a bad habit of drinking coffee. But um, my doctor said okay in moderation. But to be honest, I have one at least three times a week. Which my doctor knows about. And she just kind of like, I'm only halfway through this list. That's how sad it is. I need to uh not be talking so much before I lose battery. The next thing that's going on alongside of my sleep guys, so sorry if it looks a little yellow, but it will warm up in a minute. Uh, but my stomach's starting to get away asleep. So I have to rotate a lot and be very careful in my rotations because I do sleep on my side, particularly on my left side, but I have to do range of motion. So I do shift around a lot more and I'm starting to get in that other comfortable stage. I don't know if I'm gonna end up getting a maternity pillow cause about time it really bothers me. It'll be almost at the finish line. But I do have my old one, but we'll see if I really need that. But yeah, sleep is getting uncomfortable. Also, I'm realizing that I am getting exhausted quickly, which in turn is causing me to be lazy. So I don't know if exhaustion and laziness go hand in hand, but I'm receiving both of those problems. Stuff is not getting as done, but I do have a burst, burst of energy. But when I do that one thing, it's like it's over. Today is a good day because I've been very productive. But child, other days, like my work days, because I'm off today. We talk about it. Oh. Another thing that's been going on is that I kind of not been shit and when it comes to being a wife and that is not a good thing. There's nothing, nothing to brag about. Like y'all know how I am about the no sex thing and I've been slacking and giving up the poom poom, cleaning up. I just been not a good wife. Like, I know that it's okay to slack on your wifely duties because you're pregnant, but it's so hard to do these things when you have issues, you go to work, then you have a whole baby to attend to. By the time I get home from work, it's time to put her to bed, and then just like everything falls to the wayside, and then he's like, can I get poom poom, and I'm just like, no. Child, I need to wake up because it's been a long time. I've been having babies back to back. And when I get pregnant, I'm not in the mood. 
I mean, I'm not really in the mood before we get pregnant, but it's like, hey, I'm really not in the mood because I can't feel anything down there. If I can't give it up, I need to learn how to get hand jobs or something. Oh, another thing that's been going on is freaking, freak, 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 no, it's not being a freak, it's frequent urination. Been going to the bathroom a lot. I've been holding a, a gallon of water in my stomach every like hour. Do people pee every hour? Is that normal? That's not normal for me. So, um, it's like every time I go to the bathroom, it's like I'm pouring out a jug of water. So, frequent urination is a thing. I guess I'm peeing all the time. I'm peeing, then I'm leaking, then I'm running nose, and it's just, child. Outside of freaking urination, the reason why that's disrespectful is because I'm also kind of constipated. So I can't poop, but I can pee a lot. So I'm probably going to start taking the colace again so that when I want to go poo, I can just go easily. Uh, I didn't think about that before, but now talking about it now, I realize I probably should be taking colace. So, huh. I wonder if I can take prenatals. I need to ask my doctors about this. Oh, this part is kind of annoying. I don't really know if it's contributed to pregnancy, but I'm gonna blame it on pregnancy. And that's because I think I'm slowly becoming a guy because I'm growing a beard down here. And I know y'all probably seeing the vlogs where I know y'all see these string hairs, even in certain videos, child. I mean, I'm not gonna act like it wasn't a problem before, but now it's like, my hair is on my chin be getting real long. It would be like disrespectful long. It be on my throat too, so I don't be seeing it. But then when I be feeling like, I find myself doing this like I'm a guy. So now I find myself plucking, look, now I'm causing a bad habit. You know how people uh, do like bite their nails? It's me all day long. This is what I do. So now I'm growing a beard, and the more I pluck them, the more they come back. I can't be having longer hair. Like my husband even be doing this. He like, baby, it's time. That's not sexy. The last thing that's going on because the other stuff don't really matter, and I don't know how much battery I got left, and I could probably just say it next time because they're just so small. And that is that I'm losing my booty. Like. This is what happened anyway, when you have a baby, your back get wide, it get long, then your booty get flat because you ain't really doing much. But I'm still doing much, but then I don't have muscle mass because I'm not really eating as much as I'm supposed to. I got, I got like a little teardrop booty now. It's like all the muscle that used to sit up high, but don't sit up high. I got a long back now with with a water drop at the bottom. But I know it's like, it's a lot of, it's a lot of hanging going on. But yeah, let me go ahead and try to show you my belly bump because like I said, I don't know how much battery I got. So hopefully when I'm talking like this, you can understand where I'm coming from. I don't know where I got this energy from, but it's here and I'm here for it. So let me show you this belly bump, measure it, and then we'll be on our way out. So let go. So this is what my belly bump looking like now. Granted, I'm a little bit further, 22 weeks, but yeah, look at that thing right there. These are the same stretch marks I even had before now, let's uh, but I got a belly now. Look at that. So I think last time I had got dementia, amnesia. I don't really know what the difference is to, but I forgot how to measure my belly. So let's see if I remember this time. But what I got was 37 and a half. So let's see what it says now. You see my belly button is starting to poke out too? If this is right. Oh, I'm 38 and a half. That's what it say. What happened? I was 37 and a half, now I'm 38 and a half. That's 38 and a half, bruh. That's what it is. Y'all see that? Child, I'm out here. I was like 42 and a half when I had Nala, so at this rate, I'm gonna be a lot bigger with this baby than I was with Nala, because I'm almost 39 now, and I'm only halfway there, so. Okay, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. I was gonna read the Pregnancy Plus app, but I don't really wanna read the same app, so I need to re-download some of the new apps that I downloaded before, before I got this new iPhone and start reading from that because this ain't where it's at. Oh, but I probably can tell you what's the size of the baby. 
that would probably be interesting so baby is the size oh of an eggplant that's what it say right along with the conversation of today so yeah at least want to tell you guys that part but yeah let me go ahead and get out of here so i can make sure i have a proper ending but i really do appreciate you guys for watching thank you for supporting me and the channel and both my baby girl turn on your post notifications subscribe to the channel and i'll definitely see you guys in the next one